Good morning and happy Sabbath. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Let us bow our heads as we enter before God's throne. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you for this day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we want to thank you, God, for allowing us to be in the land of the living. As we lift up our voices and praises to you, we pray, oh God, that you come in the midst of us. You say, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst of bless. So we ask you, Lord, that you may pour out your spirit upon every home that is viewing this program and that your spirit will be felt in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let us turn our hymnals to this old hymn. Holy day, Jehovah rest. Of creation weak the best. Last of all, the chosen seven, blessed of God, as man was given. 654 in the old hymnal. Let's go.
and we'll go to our new hymnal and we'll turn to 534. Guide me, O oh thou great Jehovah. Guide me, O oh thou great Jehovah. Help and truth this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Pull me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Till I want no more Open now the crystal fountain When the healing stream that flow Let the fire cloud the pillar Lead me on my journey through Strong deliver, strong deliver Strength and shield, strong deliver, strong deliver. Be thou still, my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, then my eyes just fair subside. Death of death and hell destruction. Let me sing on clean and side. Songs of praise, songs of praise. I will ever give to thee. Songs of praise, songs of praise. I will ever give to thee. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us turn our hymnal once again to 474 There is sunshine in my soul today, most glorious and bright than glow in any earthly sky, for Jesus is our light. Amen. There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright that glows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there is sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful. Happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today. A carol to my King. And Jesus listening can hear. The song I cannot sing. Oh, there is sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is springtime in my soul today. Oh, when the Lord is near, the dove of peace sings in my heart. The flood of grace appear. Oh, there is sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful. 
happy moments roll when Jesus showed his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today and hope and praise and love for blessings which he gives me now for joy made up above oh there is sunshine blessed sunshine where the peace will happy moments roll when Jesus shows his smiling face there is sunshine in my morning and happy Sabbath to everyone viewing this online program, both near and far. I welcome you to sit back as we listen to the voice of God through his word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, that you have given us a Sabbath day where we can rest from all our work and dwell in the presence of your holy word. We thank you, God, for being with us throughout this week. Though it may be tough, you have promised that you never leave us nor forsake us. Father God, as we are about to meditate on your word, I pray, O God, that you give us the wisdom and understanding. Bless us, O God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The theme for my program is let everything that has breath. Let everything that has breath. Scripture reading is taken from Genesis chapter 2, verses 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Breath. What is it? Where did it come from? Who gave it to us? How to use it? I wonder if we ever thought about these questions. In the beginning, 
our first parents was endowed with this invisible yet most important commodity, breath. Without it, life will cease to exist. And that is a big deal. Let me bring you back to an incident that took place in the United States of America on the 25th of May, 2020. It caused a massive protest for days all over the country and fueled outrage throughout the world due to the death of an African-American man by the name of George Floyd by the hand of a white policeman during his arrest. According to reports, it was said that a policeman on duty knelt down on Floyd's neck and back for 9 minutes and 29 seconds. As he was dying, he said over and over, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Due to the policeman kneeling on his neck. Now this man could have been alive today if that policeman was not on his neck. Why? Because he would have been able to breathe. Now take a look at yourself. We are in a very desirous position when compared to those struggling for air and dying by the hour due to the COVID-19 virus. But what do we use our breath for? Is it to complain, to gossip, to abuse our loved ones, or to encourage and guide, or to praise God? I know we sometimes fall into one of these categories. Let's take a look at a complainer. Hello? Yeah, yeah, get it, get it, get it. Can I call and you to complain? I don't make my little appointment with the hairdresser. And she telling me, I can do my hair again. Oh, hold on, by she flooded and she can do hair. So I had to wait. That's not right. I don't make my appointment. Go home with me and my hair in a mess. My hair need to do. What will go on? I need my hair to do. It's car work. It's car work. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What does complaining do? Can it fix a problem? Well, it can. That's only if we complain to the right person. Not going about talking to Tom, Dick, and Harry, or Jane, Susan, and Annie. When we use our breath in that way, we are defeating the purpose of why it was given. Showing a lack of faith in the one who gave it to us and to the people we meet. What about gossip? Paul. Yeah, babe, what's up? Come now, come now. I'm going to tell you something before you go to work now. Come, come. Yeah, but you have to tell me this yeah, already morning, girl. Yeah. You wouldn't believe who, who the say pregnant, the, the neighbor of the road. What do you mean, Mr. Harry? Yeah, Mr. Harry, daughter. Really? She pregnant. Susie? And here this now, they don't even know who the father is. Yeah, you, you see, you ask I'm telling you, they not the same one who does, who does go to church. Yeah, she yeah, go. yeah, but she don't even talk to nobody. She don't even talk to no boys in no, church. No, she, she, she's go to church and she's do she thing in church and thing. But hmm. I don't know who the father is. Don't make joke. That we're telling you. You sure you're not one of them feathers from in church? Who's who that? Who, who and, father and, in church? I know Henry was interested in Henry? her. Henry? Yes. I don't know. I can't say no. But what if it's Henry, what kind of thing going on? You see why I just like to stay home and, and praise, praise my Lord because I don't know. I can't handle that, you know. But I don't understand. I wonder if um sister um oh gosh, was it was it was the lady name of the, the sister who does go the same church with she? Sister, of the road? sister Susan? Sister Susie. Yeah. I feel sister Susie knows something, you know, boy. And she ain't tell me nothing. She what is this? So Back and I'm going. So we're not going the, to the church board no? Do you know if they know you know what you, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I'm going to call sister Susie right now. Right now. Yeah, but she go she go she go tell the church board. Nothing. 
I want them to know what's going on. Yeah, I go and call Sister Susie and find out. So you go and get yourself organized for work. Yeah. And I going up the hill. Okay, baby. Right? Right, and you'll be safe, man. Remember? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Didn't, I go be safe. You remember, worry. you you didn't tell me nothing, eh? No, I, I go be so safe. So I don't know nothing. You, you don't worry, you don't worry, right? And you know I don't like to gossip, eh? No, nah, don't worry. Yes, wow. This really destroys everything. Even the person who is doing it. And according to the Bible, God hates it. Proverbs 6, 18 and 19 says, And heart that devise wicked imag imagination, feet that be swift in running into mischief, a false witness that speak lies, and he that, is, he that soweth discord among the brethren. So what is this text saying here? A false witness that speaketh lies. That speaks about gossiping. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. We are not to use our breath in that way. Let's talk about abuse. of abuse but let's focus on vocal and non-vocal abuse yes it's saying all the things that can tear a person down words like you are so fat and ugly you are so dunce you would never be anything good you can't even cook why did I marry you Words like these can cause someone not to believe in themselves anymore. And also, not saying the things that can build a person up is abuse. Even the famous silent treatment we give each other. Is that the purpose of the breath that God gave to us? 
That breath should be used to make peace among family and not break it down. It only causes pain and pushes everyone apart. I would always say to my kids, no matter how upset you are, never go to sleep angry. Let your last breath before you sleep be spoken with kindness. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. People tend to say to me that I like to say I'm sorry too much. Well, I don't mind. It makes everything better and it brings families together. Using our breath to encourage and guide in the right way uplift the whole plan of salvation. Take a look at this. What problems you have? You have you sit down here crying. So you're hungry. No. Somebody died. No. What, what what discouraging you? What making you feel so discouraged, girl? Nobody don't want to be my friend. Listen to me. In this world, if nobody don't want to be a friend, Jesus is your friend. You know, he's a friend that stick it closer than your brother. He's your friend too. You know, you know that. You understand? This bread that God give you, this life that God give you. You give it to be an example to others. Don't sit down in discouragement. Get up and praise God at your life. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. The Bible says a man who has friends must show himself friendly. Go out and make friends. You get what I'm telling you? Get up and praise God. Don't sit down in discouragement. Let everything that had bread praise the Lord. Praise Him. I said to praise the Lord. Praise Him. That's what I'm talking about. Put a smile on your face. Beautiful. It soothes the troubled mind and guide the wayward heart back to the one who gave them their breath. So be an encourager today. Guide some young person onto the road to betterment. At this time, we will pause for a special music. If we call to him, he will answer us. If we run to him, he will run to us. If we lift our hands, he will lift us up. Come now, praise his name, all the saints above. Sing for joy. Sing, 
Let's praise the Lord. Go. Praise the Lord. My neighbors upset. Was I praising God? Said making noises early morning. Huh. Neither you nor the neighbor give me bread. You know how grateful I am to God for waking me up every morning, which He didn't have to, and I could breathe. So listen. I will go on my rooftop and I will shout, thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Wait, listen. I'm going to tell you this. In Psalms 150, verse 6. Here we see. Everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Yes? So you... And you don't let nobody tell you how to praise God. You want the rocks and the trees to cry out. Well, not me. So all you leave me. Let me praise my God how I want to praise my God. Praise away. Let me praise away. So do you have breath in your nostrils? Do you have breath in your lungs? Then praise the Lord. When faced with trials and you feel like you can't move on, praise the Lord. Job 33, 4 said, The Spirit of God had made me, and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. This should be our encouragement, never to give up. Lift up your breath in praises to God. Genesis 2, 7 also said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So this is the source of our existence. The breath of life that comes from God. So we should praise the one who gave it to us. Job 27, 3 and 4 said, All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. So I will close with this scripture verse that was given to us by our dear sister Morona. Psalms 150 verse 6. It is the last chapter and the last verse in the book of Psalms. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So in all that we do, let God's name be praised through our breath. Do have a splendid and enjoyable Sabbath. Goodbye.
again today our story is entitled be careful little eyes what you see be careful little eyes what you see johnny attended school online everybody is online now so johnny is online he has a phone and he has a tablet so every day he would log into school but this day in particular, at break time, all the boys talking about all the shows they watch on their laptop or on their tablet. And Jody stood there and he's listening to all these boys talking about all these shows that they watch. But Johnny couldn't say anything. He couldn't contribute anything to the conversation. So Johnny sat there and he like, mm. So I can't even say anything because I didn't even get to watch those shows. So Johnny decided, you know what? When I go home this afternoon, I have to watch a show because I want to say something tomorrow. So when he got home the afternoon, he sat by the table. He did his homework assignments. He did everything. Later on that evening, he had dinner and then went to his bedroom. He took his tablet with him to his bedroom and he put his tablet under his pillow and he laid on his bed as if he is going to sleep. And Johnny waited for a while and he waited until the house was quiet. Not a sound was heard. It was very quiet and he said, aha, uh -huh, everybody is in their bed now. No my tablet and watch whatever I want. So he took out his tablet and he started and he went on and he's looking and he's looking and he's looking. And then a certain time he came across something and he said, this. so he started to watch it and he watched it and he watched it and he watched it. The hours passing and Johnny is there on his tablet watching what is going on. And when it was late in the night, that is the time Almost morning, Johnny went to sleep. And he went to sleep. Got up in the morning, got ready for school, and he sat down in front of his device again for school. 
The teacher taught everything he listened. And when was break time and the boys came together again to talk, uh -huh. Johnny has something to say no, because he spent all night watching what they been watching on his device. So he had something there and he started to talk and he started to tell them everything. Yes. And I saw, so and so, and, did, and he started to talk and talk. But Jim mother heard the conversation and she said, but wait. This is not for my son. What is this boy telling my son? So she took a side and she went aside where Johnny could not see. Nobody could see her. And she was hiding right there. And she listened to everything Johnny was saying. And Jim was so taken up in that he didn't even see his mother. Because he loved what he was hearing. He never saw those things before. So he got in fresh news on the market. He listened to everything, man, and he took it in. All the other boys took it in. Nobody told Johnny what he was saying was right. They loved what they heard, so they listened. They took up their air, and they listened. And Jim, Jim mother stood up there, she listened to everything. And then it was time to start that class, so conversation done, and class start back. Jim mother went, and she took her phone, and she dialed. Johnny mother and she said hi well I know that your son carrying on a conversation with my son and others and if you hear what your son telling my child and I don't like that kind of conversation because I don't involve, involve my child in that my child don't watch those kind of things so you need to be careful what your child watch and Johnny mother said but I know that's not my Johnny. Johnny, don't watch those things. Johnny would mm -hmm. eat. And then he goes and go to bed. She said, eh, well, and I just heard Johnny talking all those things. She said, you need to check your Johnny and make sure it's your Johnny. She said, okay, thank you very much for calling. I will be that. Uh, evening came. Johnny came home. Good afternoon, mommy. Good afternoon, mommy. Mommy came home. So Johnny, good afternoon, mommy. Good afternoon, mommy. Johnny telling mommy good afternoon because he's so excited to see his mommy come home. Good afternoon, mommy. Good afternoon, mommy. So mommy said, good afternoon, Johnny. How was your day? Good, good, good. She told Johnny nothing. Johnny sat by the table again, did his homework, had his dinner, hurry up to bed again and took his tablet with him again because he wanted to watch another show he wanted to continue watching that show because he felt so good everybody listened to him today he had something to say so he wanted to have something to say the next day again so he carried the tablet up and he put it under the pillow again and he lied down and he wait again until the house is quiet 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 real quiet so you know everybody listen up to sleep so he took out his tablet again and he went but the thing about this once you start looking at one thing on your tablet it's easy to find it back so it popped up again and johnny sat down there and he's trying he watching and he's watching and he's taking in everything he's taking it in and he's watching and he's watching uh -huh. the bugger didn't sleep the night before so he fell asleep tablet on bed and he <sighs> <sighs> Mommy came into the room, opened the door, and she came in and she saw the tablet there. And she said, eh, eh, all right, she took it up and she looked. She said, this is what Johnny looking at? No, not my Johnny. Not my Johnny, not my Johnny. She took the tablet and she gone out of the room, closed back the door easy, and she left him sleeping there. And Johnny woke up. And Johnny now remember I was watching my thing on my tablet. So he's looking for the tablet. Looking. He look on the ground. He look under the pillow. He look on the bed. He look on the board. Can't find the tablet. Where my tablet? Tablet gone. Can't find the tablet. So he now he suspect maybe mommy came in and took my tablet. He, so he said, nah, I feel it dropping and going under the bed. But same time mommy came in the room. Johnny, come for your breakfast. Come for breakfast, Johnny. So he didn't get a chance to look under the bed. But Johnny thinking, it must be fall and going under the bed. Why nothing? Because say that I'll go back and take it up just now. Go on down for breakfast. Mm. 
some more air breakfast, you know. And now he said, Johnny, how was school yesterday? Oh, it was good. I cannot wait for school today. Okay, Johnny, very nice. But she said, Johnny, where's your tablet? He said, I think I'm going to, I, I, I think I carried it upstairs, but I, in my phone under the bed, I'll go for it just now. She said, you sure your tablet is under the bed? He said, yeah, I think it's for all I'll go for it just now. I'll go for it just now because I need it for school, so I'll go for it just now. Mommy said, Johnny, is this your tablet? Johnny was like, Mommy, how you have my tablet? Where did you get my tablet? Mommy said, Johnny, I came into the room last night and I took your tablet and I saw you were watching things on this tablet that is not nice. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> and Johnny started to cry. Johnny broke down in tears and he cried and he cried and he cried. And his mommy said, Johnny, Johnny, oh Johnny, my sweet Johnny. Johnny, why? Why, Johnny? Why did you? Why did you go and look at those things? Johnny, you know what I do. Johnny, those things are not good. Johnny, what are you putting inside your brain? Johnny, why, Johnny? Johnny, why, Johnny? I don't want you to look at those things. I don't want you to look at those things. And Johnny and mommy just stood there and they cried on each other. And mommy said, Johnny, why did you do it? Tell me, why did you do it? And then Johnny said, Mommy, all the boys have something to say in school when it's break time. Everybody has something, and I have nothing to say. I can't even contribute to the conversation. Every day I have nothing to say. She said, but Johnny, you have so many things you can tell these boys and girls. You can tell them all that you learn in Sabbath school. You can tell them about Jesus' love. Even though they are talking other things, you can talk about Jesus. You can share Jesus with them, Johnny. Why didn't you do that, Johnny? I got a call yesterday and it was not a nice call, Johnny. And it disturbed me. Johnny, why did you do it? <laughs> Mommy, I would not do it again. <laughs> Mommy, I'm really, 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 really sorry. I would not do it again. And Romy said, Johnny, I hope you will not do it again. You know what? There is a song you sing in Sabbath school. Can you remember that song? Be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. And then mommy said, be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little eyes what you see. For your father up above, he is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little air, what you have. Be careful, little air, what you have. For your father up above, he is looking down in love. So be careful, little air, what you have. And he said, thank you, mommy. And from now on, I am going to be very careful with what I put into my mind, what I see, what I hear. Mommy said, yes, Johnny, I'm not going to punish you. But you know what? Every day when you are finished, that tablet will stay downstairs on the table. You are going up to your bed without your tablet. He said, yes, mommy, I understand. Thank you, mommy. From that time on, Johnny obeyed. Boys and girls, we have to be careful with what we see. We have to be careful with what we hear because some of the things we listen to and some of the things we watch is not good for us. We don't need to be involved in those type of conversations. We don't need to watch those things. Please be careful. And parents, word for you, word for you parents, make sure you know what your child is watching on these devices. God bless everyone. I can have my Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for blessing us and having us another life, Lord. And guide us and protect us from all harm and danger, Lord. As for the children of God, Lord. We know we are, we are sinful, Lord. But we know that you can guide us to the right path, Lord. 
please bless us and guide us to, to the best part of, 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 of your holiness, Lord. Please help us to stray away from our sin and, and to focus on you, Lord. Please bless us as we come in your name, Lord. Be with us for all eternity, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
and the Sabbath saints of God. It's indeed a privilege for us to be in the house of the Lord for yet another Sabbath. I, 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 I know that I'm in a, a strange land to some of you, but I'm in the best place at this time, the best island. Is the closest you will ever get to paradise once you visit Grenada. So those of you who have not yet done so, please come along. Come along. It's indeed a privilege again for me to speak to you on behalf of our Mika and King. I, 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 I Sister Diroch, Sister Mero, Lurin, what's happening? I'm not seeing you all, I'm not hearing you all. So said, you for the longest while I hear you have to call me up to now. I'm still waiting on that call. Well, God is good, brethren. God is good. It's indeed a privilege once again to minister on behalf of God to his people. And shall we pray? Father, we thank you. One more time for your love and your mercies, your goodness that never fails. Your loving kindness you have said in your words, new every morning is your love. Great is thy faithfulness. So be with us now. Be with me in a special way. As I present this message, may you help me to decrease and you increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I, I, I have chose for the caption... Of my short discourse today, what is love? What is love? We all at some point in our lives seek love in some way or the other. Many people like the act of love to be demonstrated to them. Others just love to feel loved. But my question is, what is love? How does one get love? Is love a one way thing? Stacy Latisha, who wrote, I found love on a two way street and lost it on a lonely highway. True love will never die, so I've been told. But now I must cry, it's finally goodbye. I know with music softly playing, his lips gently saying, Honey, I love you. He held me in desperation. I thought it was a revelation. And then he walked out. How could it be? How could I be so blind to give up love the very first time? To be fooled is a hurting thing. To be loved and fooled is a crying shame. Why I pass the blame as he laughed my name. You see, to Stacy at that moment she had found love. But then as she said she lost it on a lonely highway. To be fooled is a crying shame while I pass the blame. To give up love the very first time. To be fooled is a hurting thing. <laughs> and I don't know about you. Maybe you can, at some point, in some way or the other, you have been fooled. And you didn't feel too good about it. I know to myself that I have been fooled and I didn't feel too good about it. And so it is in the Christian circle today. Many times we profess love to one another. But from the time things go wrong... All love turn to hate. And so, con uh, 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 and so sometimes we love conditionally instead of unconditionally. You see, if we if we, we, we claim that we love in spite of what 
the situation or circumstance. How could such love turn to hate? And so sometimes we love conditionally instead of unconditionally. You see, some people will love you simply because of what they can get from you. Some people will love you because they, they, they know whenever they come to you, they can get a good gossip. Some people will love you because they know they can lean on you whenever you call on them. But, but the many times you decide to take a stand, from the time you decide to take a stand uh, and, and, and you find or uh, you tell yourself, well, look, this person is, is, is adv advantaging me. Or, 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 or this person not being real. Or, 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 or somewhere along the night I'm not feeling comfortable. That love no turn to hate. But as Stacy asks herself the question, how could love go wrong? You see, sometimes, brethren, we must remember that love in itself is an action word. I, I don't just want to hear from, from, from the brethren, oh, Oh, you know, I love you. But when it comes to the demonstration of love, is a different something. If I say to, 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 to Luan or, or, or to Tracy or to Tashika that I love you, they should be able to see that love being demonstrated. If Trim say to, to, to Sister Lisa, Oh, Lisa, you know, I love you. But Lisa is not seeing or feeling that love, something wrong. And if Guy is saying to, 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 sister, to sister Guy, oh, maybe you know how much I love you. Or, why behave in that way? Or you know, you don't have to question my love for you. But on the other hand, it's something different. Or, or, or if Marlon is saying to his wife, yo, that love I have for you, it will never die. And so I will walk from Charlottesville to Mova for you. But let a little rain start to fall. And so Marlon will make it his duty to ensure that he get to Sister Jean in home and say, you know, it, it, it's, it's too much of rain tonight. I, I can't come again. I can't keep my appointment and he will go back home. But is that really love? And, and you know, brethren, love hurts. And, and many times, from the time something goes wrong or, 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 or we, we are disappointed or, and we are not feeling that love the way in which we once used to feel it, we turn to look at things from a different standpoint. Maybe someone hurt you in the past and, and because of that hurt, the way in which that person hurt you in the past, you cannot forgive that person. And sometimes we always want to fight fire with fire. But may I remind us today in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12 and verse 19. He said, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Many of us will find that's a hard thing to do, to, to, to forgive and to forget. And so we want to fight fire with fire. But the text is telling us, the good Lord is reminding us, let us not avenge. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. He will fight your battle for you. We don't have to fight every battle. Sometimes we need to let go and let God take full control of that situation. The more we try to fight fire with fire is the more the situation will get out of hand. But the text is reminding us, Lord is saying, vengeance is mine, I will repay. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18, he says, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. 
but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Some of us fighting with our, with, with our neighbors for boundary pole. But are we going with that boundary pole? How many of us say hello to our neighbors? How many of us share whatever we have with our neighbors? Yet, we're talking about love. We all at some point in our life was done. <laughs> I don't know about you. I was done. We were doomed or destined for destruction. But then God stepped in and so we can identify with Kim Cooper as she wrote, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply staying within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me now, safe am I. This was King's testimony and today many of us can identify with such a song because we know our life was a total mess. We was destined to destruction. We, did, we, we were not even sure had it not been for the grace of God whether or not we would have been here. And so because of the grace of God we can sing the song that I was sinking deep in sin. And because of the grace of God, because of the love of God, the songwriter went on, he said, he said, love lifted me. Remember one songwriter said, I heard the Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray, find indeed my all in all. Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe. And because Jesus paid it all, we must not Look down on anyone. We must always look to treat each other as the text says. Let me put it this way. Let us treat people with love. The text says, Love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. This is not a command from the pastor of the church or from the first elder of the church or from, or, or, or from some good friend. This is from the one who is altogether lovely, our maker, redeemer, and king, our sustaining group. Oh, Lord. Jesus is saying that we need to love our neighbor as ourselves. And the only how we can do that is when we have truly met with Jesus. When we have an experience, when we encounter the goodness of God, when we know where God took us from to where we are today, we will not look down on others, but we will try our best to ensure that we lift up each other. We will try our best to ensure that we make somebody's life better and not better. We will ensure that on a day-to-day -day basis, we will not can all that we get and get all that we can, but we will be our brother's keeper. You know, there's a song, I think it's number 17, and it says, O oh, love of God, how strong and true, eternal and yet ever new, uncomprehended and unbought, beyond all knowledge and all thought. O oh, love of God, 
how strong and true. God love, can we really comprehend the love of God? Can we really understand the goodness and the love of God? Can we really fathom God to know where we were to where we are today? How he has took us up, dust us off, and put us. Can we, really, can we really understand the love of God? Think about it, brethren. Some of us messed up and messed up and messed up and messed up over and over and over and over again. And what God did, we reach down, take our hands, lift us up, dust us off, and restore us. And that is love. So can we, really, can we really comprehend the love of God? The songwriter said, oh, love of God, how strong and true. I am not talking about no fake love. It went on to say, eternal and yet ever new. So in other, in, in other words, God loves every morning, new every morning. He says, great is his faithfulness beyond all knowledge and, and all thoughts. about it brethren let us think about it you know there's one song that says I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. you see God love whenever God restores we should keep falling in love with him over and over. Every day should be a new experience. We should seek for something new. We should allow God to work some, something different in our lives every day. And as he work his will in our life every day, we should always try to reach out, as I said before, and make someone lives better and not better. You know, sometimes I wonder as a people, as members of the Southeast Port of Spain Seventh-day Adventist Church, are we really letting our little light shine in the community? In this pandemic era, how are we making someone's lives better? Is the welfare department reaching out? Is the hospitality department reaching out? Is the Sabbath school department reaching out? How are we making someone's lives better? What is love? And what a God. I don't know about you, but I want to thank God for, 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 for his, I want to thank God for his unfailing love towards me. I want to thank him for his unfailing love towards me. You see, Jesus down through the ages realized that, 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 that there's someone by the name of Trevor Joseph. If I don't put in my appearances in, in his life, he will be destroyed. You see, you, you see I, I, can, I can reflect on, on, on the goodness of God many times in my life. How many times can we sit down and reflect on the goodness of God and what God has done for us? You know, sometimes we're we, 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 we so wrapped up and tied up and tangled up 
in other affairs, but when it comes to the affairs of God, when it comes to the goodness of, when it comes in terms of redoing the will of God in a different situation, many of us happy to come into church and say, oh, I'm saved. We are happy to come and sing the song, sing the song I am delivered, praise the Lord. But when someone else wants to give the life to Christ, it's a different situation. You see, that's when some of us find ourselves only diving. Especially when it comes to the point of church elections. Where I have never seen so many divers in the church at that time. But one of the things I want us to, rem to remind us of this morning that when you are diving down there to, to, to bring up somebody, so Jesus is still working on that person. And so we must not just talk love, but we should be able to demonstrate love to our brethren. In the book of Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 17 and verse 17, it says here, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born in adversity. <laughs> A friend love it at all time. And a brother is born in adversity. In other words, I suppose to be able to love my and hold her. If even though he have done me wrong. I suppose to love Sister Dora. If even though she have done me wrong. And, and, and let me bring it home a little bit now. I'm speaking to husbands and wives now. Some of us come to church. And we sit down in church, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, sanctify. But just before you leave home, you had a quarrel between your husband and your wife. Or may I say, you know you had to deliver the message this morning, but yet still, there's no peace. There's no love. There's no togetherness in the home. Parents, some children crying out for that love from the parents. Too many broken homes in our churches. Yet we want to come and fix someone else's home. Yet we want to come and preach love. In spite of what your child have done wrong, you're supposed to love that child. And so at least should not treat one better than the way in which you treat the other. All of them is yours. And you should give them that equal love. No, I'm not saying Otley doing that. I'm just using the jar reference. Where do you what is love? What really is love? And my final text in the book of John. In the book of John, my final text. John 15. I'm looking at verses 12 and 13. It says, this is my commandment, 
that you love one another as I have loved you. But most of all, it went on to say, Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. This is my commandment, that you love one another, even I have loved you. Brethren, we are living in serious times. We are living in what I call crunch time. We are living in what I call wrapping up time. Let us put aside our differences. Look at what's taking place in the world today. Some of you are, are citizens of Trinidad and Tobago and, 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 and you can't even self go to Tobago because you didn't take the vaccine. Look at what's taking place in the world today. For us to travel is dependent on a vaccine. Isn't that signs of Christ coming? Yet we want to fight and tear down and pull along each other. But the text is reminding us that we need to love one another. And let us not just talk love. Let, let brethren, if love is a principle, it's an action word. It says, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Will Guy be willing to, or, 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 or Eastman will be willing to lay down his life for Rafi? Will Showin be willing to lay down his life for Ozzy? This is what the text is saying to us. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. We must be our brother's keeper. And you know, there's one little song. He left the splendor of heaven. Knowing his destiny was the lonely hill of Golgotha. There he laid down his life for me. If that isn't love, the ocean is dry. There's no stars in the sky, and the sparrow can't fly. If that isn't love. Then heavens are made. There's no feeling like this. If that isn't love, even in death he remembered the chief hanging by. His side, he spoke with love and compassion. Then he took him to paradise. If that isn't love, the ocean is dry. There's no stars in the sky, and the sparrow can't fly, if that isn't love. 
then heavens are me. There's no feeling like this If that isn't love Think about it, brethren. Even while Jesus was on the cross, He was able to demonstrate love to a sinner. You know, many of us Oh, you know, I love you. I love you. But how can we claim that we love God whom we cannot see and those around us that we see on a day-to-day -day basis is hate and love it. Is that love? Is that love? I trust that by God's grace, this short exhortation today will be able to demonstrate love one to another. May God bless you. Father God, I thank you one more time for your words of exhortation, not just to myself, not just to the brethren, but also to myself. May you continue to let your will be done in our lives. Take our lives and let it be. Consecrate it unto thee. May your name be praised and glorified in Jesus' name.